Welcome. My name is Martin Hunigel. I'm Associate Professor of Medicine at the Division of Infectious Diseases and Global Public Health here at UCSD. And as part of my complex trial design lecture, I will talk now about the stepped wedge design. So what are the elements of a stepped wedge design? Basically, what you can see here, you have here um, placebo or standard of care, which is zero, and axis intervention. And what you can see here is that the intervention starts between the four different arms, A, B, C, and D, at different time points. So we have um, in, the, in the X axis on top, we have the time, um, and um, going on the Y axis down is the um, clusters. And what you can see here for cluster A, um, um, at time point two, um, the intervention starts versus uh, for cluster B, it starts only at time point three. For cluster C, it starts at time point four, while for cluster D, it starts at time point five. This also means potentially that not all the different clusters are receiving the intervention for the same period of time. So su such a step wedge design often uses cluster randomization although it can also be done with individuals um, and the crossover design. The crossover here, and that's very important, that's the difference to the crossover design, is unidirectional. But the time of the crossover varies and is randomized. So this is, these are the, dif the differences to the standard crossover design. At the end, all clusters are exposed to the intervention. And the data collection really occurs throughout, at least at each different time point. So here you can see basically um, how such a step wedge design um, would look. Um, let me see if I can mark here. Okay, this doesn't work. But basically on top, uh, on the top left, you have here the parallel cluster study. Um, then at, at, on the top right, you have um, a parallel cluster study with a baseline period. And really on the bottom, we have the step wedge designs. And first of all, we have on the left the step wedge design um, without a washout or transition period, right? So you really transition directly without any period from your standard of care or placebo to um, the intervention. And then on the right side, we have the step wedge design that really includes um, a transition period um, that can have very variable length, basically. And this is, again, um, to make sure that there are no carryover effects. What are the advantages of such a step batch design? First of all, they are efficient, because again, as a sort of a crossover design, units are their own control. And fewer units will therefore be needed to be enrolled. A big, one of the biggest advantages is really the logistical advantages. The resources for implementation are reduced because they can really be deployed sequentially. So if you think about you know, complex intervention where, where we will have a study team visit all the different sites to um, um, basically do the trainings, um, this could be much more efficient because at the end, if you have multiple sites, the first sites you train may have already forgotten what they learned in your training, right? So in that way, with a step batch design, you can train and the site can directly begin, um, basically, with the, implement, with the intervention. Important, um, 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 basically, um, it can also be used for a study um, that has a secular time um, for the intervention. For example, a season or a year, right? And this is, for example, when we think about influenza or something that really comes usually in winter months, right? And we think about the world and more potentially a multinational study where we want to enroll different countries, including, for example, Australia and, and the United States, we know that the seasons are, have different time points, right? So there also a step wedge design would really work um, to um, do such a trial. Importantly, it's not exclusive to service delivery interventions. But of course, it's very well suited for studies um, that do not recruit individual patients. Um, it can be service delivery interventions, but it can also be implementation, for example, of a vaccination program. One example here for a step wedge design is uptake and population level impact of expedited partner therapy on chlamydia trachomatis and nasira gonorrhea 
um, the Washington State Community Level Randomized Trial. And you can see here the reference where you can um, read this trial um, and see how they implemented the step batch design into their study. This brings me to our exercise. So please, during watching the lecture, I will give you two options. And out of these two options, please select the research question that may be best answered um, with a step wedge design. After watching the lecture then, basically would ask you to design a randomized clinical trial with the, with the um, step wedge design, um, including a flow diagram, to define the primary outcome, and to really list for both options the benefits and disadvantages of a stepped wedge design versus a standard parallel trial design. So these are the two options for our exercise. Option one is to study the impact of an injectable drug that prevents influenza infection in close context of cases on local rates of influenza in emerging departments in Australia, Europe, and the United States. Option two is to perform a phase three trial on a drug for the treatment of a rare type B cell cancer that is added to the standard of care treatment across four hospitals at the University of California system. So either we have um, basically the four hospitals at the University of California systems, or we have basically these emergency departments on several continents, so multinational study. Give you a few more seconds for your choice. And the solution here is option one is the right um, um, answer. So for, with a step wedge design, we could very well study the impact of injectable drug that prevents influenza infection in close context of cases um, and the impact on um, local rates of influenza in emergency departments in Australia, Europe, and the United States. Option two is less good a fit because it's a very rare disease, right? Um, and there might be a high intracluster variability um, and the stage of underlying disease may also be variable. So it does not be a, it's not, it's not, it's not a good fit for the step wedge design here. And with that, I want to thank you for your attention.